Hey Vipers, welcome to our hybrid informational video. We're gonna go through a few slides from our district office that have information for all students district-wide, but we'll also cover some procedures specific to Verado High School. But then we will go through and answer your questions that you submitted last week. And so at the end of the day, if you still have questions regarding the hybrid transition that we are about to make, please feel free to reach out to me and I'll be sure to get them answered. But uh, we appreciate you joining us tonight. And again, if you have any other questions, please reach out and we'll get them answered. So we begin our hybrid schedule and our hybrid learning on October 12th. As a reminder that the quarter ends on Friday, October 2nd, and we go into fall break next week. So if you have questions, please reach out and we'll get them answered for you. But otherwise, uh, sit back and enjoy the info and we'll look to try to get some of these questions answered for you right now. So uh, let us know if you need anything and on to the show. One Verado. Okay, here we go. All things hybrid. So welcome back, everybody. These are going to be the procedures and uh, policies that we use district-wide and at Verado High School when we transition back into a hybrid schedule. So first and foremost, uh, for, for students, please don't come on campus if you are sick. All right. Second, make sure that you have your mask ready before you enter campus or load onto the bus. And then finally, your complete your health screener every single day before entering the classroom. These are three keys to uh, what we'll be doing in this upcoming quarter. And we'll go into a little bit more detail with all of them as this presentation continues. Okay, so first, uh, regarding masks, make sure that your mask is a school appropriate mask. It is a uh, cloth mask that, that goes around your ears. Uh, make sure you're covering your mouth and nose. So it's a mask that does, does that. Uh, make sure that you are wearing your mask at all times. The only times that you are not allowed to, or, or that you can take down your mask would be when you are eating or if you are on a designated mask break. We will have mask breaks for students uh, during each of the class periods. They'll be scheduled uh, and they will be outside. Okay. And again, regarding mask guidelines, follow those classroom rules. If you're in the classroom, they got to be worn at, at all times. Uh, when you're speaking, when you're presenting, uh, we, we will keep the masks on both staff and students in the classroom at all times. All right. The daily health screener. This is something that we will use to uh, make sure that we have um, healthy students and, and staff on campus each day. So you need to complete this every single day, regardless if you're feeling well or if you're feeling unwell. We're gonna ask that you complete this prior to coming on campus or on the bus. So this will be something that'll be either, uh, you can access by link or through QR code. And that is how you will utilize the health screening uh, document. If you do not do it, a reminder will be sent and we will ask you to complete this because we do wanna make sure that you are feeling good when you are on campus. All right, and thank you for going to your classroom as soon as you arrive on campus. So one of the things that we have to do in this uh, quarter is that we do need to try to limit our uh, congregating in certain areas on campus uh, in order to maintain appropriate and safe social distancing measures. So when students arrive on campus, we're gonna ask that you use either the uh, East Cafeteria entrance, the West Cafeteria entrance, or the bus loop in order to access um, the, the building. So as soon as you get on campus, we're going to ask, and you step into the building, we're going to ask that you go right to that first class. Remember to respect all social distancing while on campus. And so this would include when you're in classroom, cafeteria, library, counseling office, uh, meeting with the nurse. Basically, when you're meeting with people, when you're working with people, we don't want you in close uh uh, proximity to each other. We do want you to try to maintain that social distancing as, as best as you can. And again, these would be items that uh, we're going to ask that you bring and that you do not share when you are in the building. So that would include pens, pencils, markers, food, water bottles, um, any items from the teacher's desk. Uh, so students, you will be responsible for, for your own materials. We're going to ask that you please don't share them. Um, lab equipment, uh, you know, project equipment. We are in the uh, process of, of planning lessons and labs and also acquiring the materials so that everybody has individual sets of 
uh, material to use in the classroom and, and on their own so you do not have to to share. Um, and, and then if it's something that does have to be shared, we will disinfect it after each use. Um, recommended items for, for school. So some of the questions that we'll get to here in a little bit will be, you know, what, what should my kid bring to school each day? So definitely uh, they have to have a mask when they are on campus. They also need to have their own water bottle. Our water uh, um, fountains, the regular fountain piece will not be in use during quarter two. The bottle filling station will be in use. So students will be able to, to fill their, their bottles throughout the day. So we encourage students to bring a refillable water bottle each day to class. Um, also, please make sure that you bring your personal school supplies, such as writing utensils, uh, paper pen, whiteboard, uh, dry erase marker if, if you need them. Um, any personal class specific items that you may need uh, to bring, make sure you bring those as well. And then uh, for, for PE or strength and conditioning classes, make sure that you bring your items so that you can, you can change into them and keep yourself clean. We won't be having a locker for you to store these items in. However, you will be able to utilize the locker rooms for, for changing and, and, and cleaning up. We will stagger uh, the, the use so that there are only a few kids in, in at a time. But these would be items that you would bring when you get to meet your teachers uh, during quarter two they may have some other supplies that they'll ask for you to, to bring each day. Okay. Um, and again, uh, the traditional water fountains will not be uh, in operation. Instead, the bottle filling stations will be uh, in use. So make sure you bring a refillable water bottle each day to the building. Okay, let's talk about our bell schedule. So when we come back, in October, on October 12th, this will be the bell schedule that we will utilize. Again, remember it is a later start in the day because we share buses with the early start schools and our transportation office does want to have the opportunity to clean and disinfect the buses prior to our students loading onto the bus. So school will go from 8.30 to 3.25. We will be utilizing fourth block, fifth block, and six block classes. Um, as we did one, two, and three in quarter one. Uh, we will be utilizing two lunches, and we'll talk through lunch procedures here in just a moment. But if you are an A lunch student, after period five, you go directly to lunch. After lunch, you go to advisory, and your advisory would take place in your advisor's classroom. If you're a B lunch student, you go directly to advisory, and then after advisory, you would go to lunch. So Lunch is 30 minutes long and advisory is 35 minutes long. Both sets of students, whether they're an A lunch student or a B lunch student, they will go to six block at the end of the day. And that's how we will close out our, our day. Okay. So as a reminder, and, and I appreciate uh, students reaching out and families reaching out to their counselors and to me if they needed to make a change to their schedule. But we'll have two types of students on uh, working with us next quarter. First, we'll, we will have our flex students. Flex students are students who will be continuing to stay at home and working remotely during quarter two. So flex students um, will be at home all of quarter two. They will have teachers, they will have a classroom uh, a, a set of students to be working with in the classroom, but they will be working remotely much like what we did in quarter one. Hybrid students will be on campus for two days each week. We will have an A group and a B group, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, but they'll be on campus for two days a week, and then they will be uh, working remotely the other three days. Wednesday is still an off-campus day for students. It'll, just, it'll be utilized as a opportunity to um, have tutoring, enrichment opportunities, club opportunities, and a chance to, to get caught up on work. All right, so our two groups of students in the hybrid setting will be our A group or students on the Viper Black schedule. And then students in the B group are students who will be doing the Viper Gold schedule. If you're on the Black, Viper Black schedule, you are in person in the building on Mondays and Thursdays. If you are on the Viper Gold schedule, you will be in person on Tuesdays and Fridays. And again, those other three days, you are working remotely. If you are a flex student, 
You'll work with your teachers to determine which group you're paired with for assessment and uh, class activities. So A group, Viper Black schedule. B group, Viper Gold schedule. We will be sending emails to students tomorrow that will confirm this is the group that you have been assigned to, whether it's Viper Black, Viper Gold, or the Flex group. We're sending it to students because we have all of the student emails and, and we know that they are correct. So parents and guardians, make sure that you talk to your student tomorrow just to make sure that they receive their confirmation email for what schedule they will be utilizing in quarter two. If you do need to make a change, whether you are a hybrid student now and you want to become a flex student, or if you're a flex student and want to become a hybrid student, please make sure that you reach out either to your counselor or to me directly uh, by Friday, because I would like to finalize the schedule by Friday so that we know who to prepare for in terms of how many kids will be on campus on Monday, October 12. So again, if you need to make changes, we're still allowed to make changes. However, I need to know by Friday, by the end of the day, so that we can have set schedules going into fall break. And again, reach out to your counselor or to myself if you have questions. Okay, so again, let's talk about lunch. So lunch each day will be from 12.20 to 1.30, depending on if you're an A lunch or a B lunch student. How it basically works is this, is that if you are an A lunch student, you are going directly to the cafeteria following fifth block. Students will be able to sit four to a table, whether it's in the inside cafeteria, the east outdoor cafeteria, or the West Outdoor Cafeteria. We will have a total of six serving areas for students. Uh, one will be in each of the outdoor cafeteria areas, and then four of our serving windows will be open. And we will have about 300 some students on, in the area per, per lunch, just given the, given the day. So lunches should go quick in terms of getting kids to get a meal and be able to sit down and find a seat. And all breakfast and lunch meals for all students are free for the uh, remainder of this first semester. So that is something that the USDA is providing to all students uh, nationwide. So lunch will be grab and go. We will not have a la carte stations, but lunch and breakfast will be free to, to all of our students through the, the federal lunch program. But if you're an A lunch student, you're going straight again to lunch. You're gonna if you're uh, if you brought your own lunch, you're finding a seat and you're beginning to eat. If you are getting a, a a lunch from our cafeteria, you'll go to one of the serving areas. You'll get your food, and then you'll sit down and you'll eat. We will go through and we'll we'll work together um, our lunch monitors uh, and and students in keeping the cafeteria clean and then uh, cleaning it uh, before we transition from A lunch to B lunch. Um, but A lunch students go to lunch first, then they go to advisory. B lunch students follow the same procedures. They'll go to advisory first, then at, when advisory concludes, they will be released to lunch, where again, they will utilize either the indoor cafeteria or either of our outdoor eating areas, and we'll have a total of six serving stations available for students who want a hot lunch on campus. Okay, let's talk about the classroom. So our classroom procedures and, and setup will look kind of like this, where all of our desks will face in the same direction. Our desks have been set up where we're trying to keep students as close to six feet apart as possible as we can, uh, given the, the number of students and, and our room constraints. Again, when you're in the classroom, it'll be masks on at all times. And then this, this part will be the, the final piece is something for all students, whether they are a flex student or whether they're an in-person hybrid student. But regardless of the group, all students will be on camera or in person at the start of the class and then in the final few minutes of the, the class. The reason for this is, is simple, is that we want all of our students, regardless of what type of learning environment they are in, to know what's going on at the beginning of class, to understand what are we doing during class, and also to be able to take attendance, all right? After that initial first 10 minutes of, of class for attendance and, and introductions, teachers will let all students know this is what you're going to work on. If you're at home, they'll give you the assignment or the task to work on. If you're in the building, they'll start working with you on that a task or assignment, or they'll keep both groups together uh, and, and, and work with both at the same time. 
But regardless of how uh, the, the majority of the class goes, the final 10 minutes, again, that entire group will come back together, where then, whether they are in person or on camera, so that they can get the final instruction for, for the day. We are asking for that even at home, those students need to come check back in at the end of class. Uh, and if they don't, they will be marked absent. The reason for this is that we want to try to get back to some consistent attendance practices. And if a student was in the building, left class and didn't return for the end of class, they would be marked absent as well. So all students, first 10 minutes, you're all together with, with your teacher for instruction and attendance. Last 10 minutes, again, you're all together for final instruction and for, and for release. In the building, our cleaning process will kind of look like this, is that as students are and teachers are wrapping up class, students will have uh, the teacher, sorry, teachers will have the students stand up. They'll go around after they've given final instruction and they're about ready to release. They'll spray down each desk. Teacher will spray down desk and chair for each student. Bell will ring. Students will, will release into their, their next class. As the new students are, are coming in, they will pick up a paper towel and then they will go and they will wipe down their, their desk and their seat before they sit down. And so that's a way that we can uh, try to, as best we can, seamlessly clean our, our desks and seats with each group that leaves the classroom. And so we'll do that every single time a class period ends. So end of first or end of fourth block, end of fifth block, end of advisory, end of the day uh, for sixth block. That's so we'll have four, four cleans of the desks and chairs uh, each day. And the, the students and teachers will work together ensuring that it takes place. All right. When students enter the building, so kind of going back to the beginning of the, the day, entering the building, we'll utilize the West Cafeteria, the North Cafeteria. The North Cafeteria is the bus loop entrance or, or the East Cafeteria entrances. So we're going to try to funnel all of our entrance in through the, the North. A reminder that students need to complete that health screener prior before uh, the start of school and entering the building. And again, we're going to ask that students go once they step on campus and enter the, the building, we're having them go directly to that first class of the day, which is fourth block this quarter. When students leave the building, we are going to stagger their release to try to limit the, the, the big groups leaving the areas at one time. And we're going to ask that students utilize the exit closest to them. So that could be the academic courtyard. It could be um, going out through one of the E-wing doors. It could be leaving directly from the field house and going to the parking lot. But we will stagger the release. Uh, we will utilize our PA system in order to determine which groups are, are leaving at what times. But the, the order for October will look like this, where the first release will be our field house, E-wing, and PE classes. Our second release will be our downstairs uh, classes, A-wing and C-wing. And then our final release of October each day will be our B-wing and our D-wing classes. So we're hoping that by staggering the release, we can kind of get kids out where it is uh, pretty easy for them to not be clustered to, together. Um, and then uh, after school, so by 3.30, only students in the building on, on campus they would be under the direct supervision of an adult on campus. So maybe they have a practice, maybe there's a club meeting, maybe there's a team meeting. Uh, we are going to offer um, after school tutoring beginning in that second week uh, back from break. So the week of October 19th. So we're still uh, finalizing those details. So we'll share those out later. But to after school tutoring could also be an opportunity for students to be on campus after school as well and get some extra help. Um, when riding the bus, again, um, we will be on a schedule where only half of our students um, at a maximum are in the building at one time. So buses, again, will be at half capacity and the buses will be staggering the seating so that students are not sitting uh, together and on top of each other um, and, and in a packed bus, kind of like in a normal uh, setup. So it'll be one person to a seat. If there are siblings that would like to sit together, siblings can sit together on a bus, but otherwise every student will have their own individual seat uh, and they will kind of zigzag throughout the, the bus. Um, you must have a bus on, or I'm sorry, a mask on when you enter the bus and you must leave that mask on through the entirety of the ride. If a student doesn't have a, a mask, 
masks will be provided to them. But if they refuse to wear a mask, they will not be allowed to ride the bus. Um, we will load and unload from the front uh, to the back. And then um, the bus driver will be going through and have some signage in the bus as as well. So again, um, the, the buses will be, be cleaned prior to our students stepping onto the bus. They will be at half capacity because we are in the building at uh, half capacity and masks must be worn at all time. Okay, we do have an outstanding uh, outside cleaning team that comes in each day. So ABM is our uh, contracted uh, cleaning service. Uh, we have an exceptional night crew that, that cleans uh, the building each night, but we also will have three uh, ABM team members uh, working with us throughout the day. Um, they will spray our, our, our bathrooms on the hour every hour, and they will wipe down high traffic touch zones every hour as well. So between uh, the, the three team members, we have a schedule with them that they will utilize to keep the building clean during the day while students and staff are in the building. And then again, at night, our night crew will get in each day to, to clean at night as well. Hey, again, for uh, passing, passing periods are, again, they're five minutes um, we're going to ask that that kids, you know, we, we're not able to congregate in the mall. We're not able to congregate in the cafeteria spaces or in the outdoor spaces. But basically, when the bell rings, we got to get you moving into the next class. So so staff uh, will be helping with with that just um, by by keeping kids moving. Um, security will be helping as well. But students, you can help us also where, you know, once the, the bell rings, we got to get you to that next class to get you safely to that that next class. Um, bathroom procedures. Our bathrooms will, will be monitored uh, by security because we are trying to limit occupancy uh, with no more than two students in a bathroom at a time. Um, so passing periods an opportunity for, for bathrooms. Uh, during class also with our longer periods, you have an opportunity uh, to leave uh, with, with the teacher's permission to go to the bathroom as well um, in order to not have to handle a million different passes or have one giant pass that travels with every, every single kid in order to, uh, you know, limit this type of a pass, we will be utilizing um, electronic passes through QR codes and links that will be on the student desktop. So if a student is going to go to the bathroom, they'll activate the link. It'll put a timestamp. Uh, they don't have to touch anything. They go to the bathroom, they return, they, they fill out the information when they return. And again, the bathrooms are cleaned hourly by ABM. Just some other uh, final reminders, just on, on from a safety uh, standpoint and cleanliness standpoint, make sure you wash your hands uh, often or use hand sanitizer often. We have um, hand sanitizer dispensers all over the building. Um, so you students are able to utilize those. Uh, try to avoid touching your face, eyes, and nose. Cover your mouth when you cough or sneeze, even with the mask on. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to limit the physical contact. So it's, you know, you try to limit the, the hugs, handshakes, and high fives. Uh, and, you know, air hugs are, are, are appreciated. And uh, I think a lot of people in the building will appreciate that as well. But basically, um, wear your mask, wash your hands, and sanitize your hands often. And there are, there are plenty of opportunities throughout the the day uh, in, in order to do so. All right, so if you think you're getting sick, these are the some of the things to, to do. So if you think you're getting sick, one, don't, don't come to school, but, but stay at home. If you're on campus, make sure to let an adult know, whether it is a, a teacher, an administrator, uh, you know, you go directly to the nurse, but, but let somebody know. Um, head to the nurse's office right away and definitely maintain uh, social distancing and keep your mask on as you make your way to that, that nurse's office. So if th the, this would be a question, what if, what if I have exposure or close contact, or if I test positive for, for COVID, what do I do and when can I return to, to school? These would be our procedures district wide on every campus is that if you're in close contact with anyone who exhibits symptoms, or if you test positive, you must quarantine for 14 days, uh, have no fever for 24 hours, and, or, and you see an improvement of symptoms. And this is where our, our outstanding nurse's office, uh, Miss Amy Passman and Miss Henrietta Mundy, uh, they're, they're outstanding. So if you have questions, call into the nurse's office and they can help work with you and your, your student um, as, as we're, we're getting ready to try to transition you back into the, the building.
Okay. Um, so what happens if, if you've had exposure or close contact and you don't get a test? When can you when can you return to, to school? So if you've been in close contact and you haven't got a, a, a COVID test, you are in close contact with anyone who exhibits symptoms, test positive, and you do not get a test, what you would need to do is quarantine for 14 days, exhibit no fever for 24 hours, and display an improvement of symptoms. Once those three areas are checked off, you're able to return to campus. What if I have symptoms, but I have a negative test? If you have symptoms and, and our, our health screener daily will go through and list off those symptoms, but if you have symptoms and your test comes back negative, you may return to school when you have no fever for 24 hours and your symptoms have improved. Okay, so definitely at the end of the day, make sure that uh, you are going through and, and practicing these uh, safety measures. Um, you're communicating with administrators or, or the nurse's office if you have questions or, or if, you just, if you're not sure, quite sure what to do, ask somebody on, on campus and we can help you with that. But if you're not feeling well, uh, stay at home um, and, and, and get healthy and, and get better so we can get you back on campus and keep everybody else safe. All right. So now we will transition into your questions where we provide answers to to what you have submitted so far. So I hope uh, this part was informative. Uh, again, we will have this posted on our school website tomorrow. And uh, if you have individual questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I will try to answer anything specifically if we didn't cover it in this first part or in this next part. So on to the questions and answers at this time. All right, Vipers, we are now on to the question and answer portion. These are questions that came in from you, uh, and we are going to read them off and, and give you some specific answers to your questions. Some of the questions, um, if they were duplicates or uh, worded pretty similar, we, we have cut them, uh, but we will take some time to address all of the questions at this time right now. So first, Let's talk about the, the schedule. So a number of questions came in uh, regarding the schedule. Um, this is some information on, on the schedule or, or specifics with that. So first, is there a chance of hybrid classes getting small enough that the black and gold groups could be combined? Uh, no, probably not. Um, to, to answer that one pretty quick, uh, right now we have 39% of our, our students for about 676 students, they will be on campus during the A day. 35% of our students will be on the B day or our Viper Gold day, and then 24 of our students percent of our students will be remaining in our flex schedule. So, at max, we'll have about 670 kids on on campus on Mondays and Thursdays. We'll have about 600 kids on campus during Tuesdays and Fridays, and then 400 students will be. Uh, staying with us remotely. Um, next question was how I chose to keep both of my students at home for the second quarter under the flex option. How will this work with some of the students being in school and some of the students uh, being online? Well, how, how this will work is, is basically kind of like what we talked about earlier, where all students will begin the, uh, the class period um, together on online and or in person, but basically they'll all be meeting up together the start of the class for attendance and for introductions, and they'll all be meeting up together at the end of class uh, for for closure and for um, final instructions. Now our teachers have been doing a, an outstanding job, just whether it's remotely or in the 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 normal classroom setup or or when we're upcoming with our hybrid setup of being able to create lessons and activities that will engage all of our students. So in some classes, they may have it where their in-person students are working on one task and their at-home students are working on something different. And then when they they flip days, they're they're going to come in and flip assignments. Some classes may have all the students working together at the same time regardless of if they are at home or if they're in the class period. But this is why we feel very strongly about starting the class together and closing the class together so that everybody knows this is what I need to do during the school day. So that's how students will be uh, working together um, with their teacher, whether they are at home as a flex student 
or in the building as a hybrid student. Next question is, will Wednesdays continue to be independent days? Yes, our, our Wednesday schedule for students will continue. Students uh, will be able to access um, opportunities for tutoring, um, enrichment, clubs, uh, team meetings, but Wednesday will be a no students at uh, in the building. It'll be an independent work day. Question was, um, are, are twins go, will, will twins or siblings go to the school on the same day? Uh, the answer is yes. Siblings and students, uh, and even students with different last names, but that live in the same household, they have been moved to be on the same schedule if they are coming into the building as hybrid students. And we, again, will be sending out specific uh, confirmation emails to our students tomorrow to let them know what group they're in. You can also access this on the, the Parent Hub uh, where you can type in your student's student ID number and it'll tell you what schedule they are currently on. Um, so again, siblings will be on the same day. Uh, students that live in the same house, but if they have different last names, they are on the same day as well if they're on the hybrid schedule. Will freshmen attend a day earlier uh, than like was planned for the beginning of school? So like a freshman orientation day. Um, unfortunately, we are not able to do a freshman orientation day for our students. However, we are working on a virtual uh, video so that students will be able to kind of get a feel for the building and be able to match teachers names to teachers faces. But we will begin quarter two. So on October 12th in advisory where students will review procedures and our ninth graders will be able to, to review that that virtual tour. Um, but unfortunately, again, we're not able to bring our, our freshmen onto campus early, but we will start an advisory and we are working on some things to help make that transition for our new students a little bit more seamless as they go through and, and access our building for the first time. Uh, will students in the in the hybrid attend school on the same day every week and will they attend with the same peers? Uh, the, the, so the answer to the questions is yes. Um, if you are a Viper Black schedule student or a student on in that A group, you'll be on campus Monday and Thursday. And again, the students in that B group or the Viper Gold group, they will be on campus on Tuesdays and Fridays. Those groups will, will stay the same. You cannot go back and forth between a uh, one schedule to, to the next. Um, so the yes, they will be attending in the same days every week. And yes, they will be attending uh, with, with their, their same peers. And again, we talked earlier with some of our safety procedures on, on social distancing, but one of the mechanisms and able to do in uh, to do social distancing in our building is to be on this hybrid schedule where we can have uh, on a, any given day, you know, maybe 40% of our students in the building while the remaining 60 are, are working remotely. Um, this allows us to space them out, allows us to, to, to limit um, traffic in, in bathrooms, it allows us to, to keep the building clean in between classes. So those are some reasons why we have gone to the hybrid and also how it will work. Um, where can I uh, find information about um, hybrid uh, transition moving forward? All of our information, we're transitioning to our website. So we will send out weekly updates. Uh, but again, it'll be on our school website where you can access all of the, the previous videos and, and slides. Next question is, I never received a link to, to make my students selection between either hybrid or flex. I am assumed they're automatically placed in the hybrid model. And that is correct. So the follow-up question is, what do I do if they if I want to change that option? If you want to change, if you have defaulted to hybrid, but you want your student to remain as a flex student, you need to go ahead and either email your student's counselor or email me directly and I will be able to update this request. Um, the hybrid setup that we're using right now, this is what we're using definitely for, for quarter two and for the foreseeable future. Um, you're not, uh, we're not locked into to anything for semester two just yet. So we'll see how the, the health metrics look as we get closer towards the end of this semester before we start making any decisions on what quarter three looks like. But for quarter two, we will be on the hybrid model as long as um, the health metrics allow us to, to safely do so. Um, and so again, if you want to make a change in that designation between flex or hybrid for quarter two, I need you to reach out to either me or your counselor as soon as you can, because I would like to finalize those rosters by Friday. Um, how are students being divided into the A and B groups? 
uh, again, we, we combined students that were uh, siblings or uh, students living in the same household uh, where we could. But then uh, we did something similar to what um, I'm, I believe uh, Litchfield Elementary did where we're doing an alphabet split. So our students from about A through about halfway through L, those were the students that made up the A group. And then the B group was that final half of L all the way down um, to Z. So that's how we did our, our split. Um, different than uh, LESD, um, they are utilizing Friday as their um, uh, third virtual day as they've, they've grouped their, their days. We are continuing to do Wednesday as it aligned with our early release days and late start days in, in previous years past. And it followed with that Wednesday schedule of independent work that we utilized in the fourth quarter and in quarter one. So we wanted to provide some consistency, but in doing so, we are a little bit different than uh, Litchfield Elementary School District as a result. But we are splitting our, our students very similarly to how they are, are doing so. Um, a question was about cross-contamination and why are kids not grouped on uh, Monday, Tuesday, and then Thursday, Friday. Uh, we decided to, to do our split with Monday, Thursday, and Tuesday, Friday, so that our students had a more consistent contact experience with their students. Um, we also feel that with uh, four different uh, cleanings within the classroom each day, um, bathrooms uh, and, and high touch uh, hand zones being uh, wiped down and cleaned throughout the day, and with a smaller number of students on campus, that um, we would still be able to keep kids safe as well as be able to provide a consistent learning environment for them. Uh, next question, if we signed up for hybrid, does it mean it's uh, the selection for the rest of the year? Uh, again, this is only for quarter two at this time. So we will reevaluate where we are um, both in our area and as a, a state as we're going into um, semester two. But for right now, this selection that you have made is just for quarter two and we'll keep you in the loop should we make changes going into um, the second semester after winter break. Um, what's the difference between flex and full online? If you are a flex student, you are working from home. You are working remotely and you have a, a teacher, a Google Classroom, and students that you'll be interacting with on a daily basis. That's what a flex student is. They're working from home, but they're working remotely. A full online student, would be a student who is utilizing Odysseyware, an online program where you do not have a teacher and you do not have a peer group. That's what a full online student would, would be. And at this time, uh, we are not adding Odysseyware students. However, there is time to switch to the Flex student if, if you would like to, if your student is currently signed up as a hybrid student. Um, I want, I would like to know if students will go every single day. Uh, again, we are only going to have our students uh, grouped in those two groups and they'll only be on campus two days a week. Um, if they will have a bus, yes, we will. We've talked about buses earlier and we will go and uh, talk about transportation and, and a little bit later. Um, and will they have to wear a mask the whole time? Um, the answer to that is yes, we are requiring that students wear a mask while they are in the building at all times. Um, however, we are going to do uh, scheduled mask breaks for every single class period so that students do have the opportunity to take their mask down for a, a brief moment before returning to class. And then we will also uh, allow students to take their mask down while they are eating. So while they are eating, they can have their mask off. Um, when is the high, uh, again, the, the schedule for the, the hybrid model Basically, um, we're utilizing classes four, five, and six. We're going to have two lunches, an A lunch and a B lunch. Advisory will be the period that is also tied to, to lunch. And um, then they'll go to six block. So again, it's a, a compacted semester with, with three classes. Um, and we will be transitioning kids uh, in, back into the building beginning on October 12th. And again, where do I find information about this transition? You find this information on our school website or on the district website in the parent hub. It's a hub of resources for, for parents on all things from um, academics to, to our transition to the hybrid. 
And final question regarding schedule is how is it do you get in a uh, the the black group schedule or the gold group schedule? Basically, it's it's by um, your last name. Um, we're not gonna we won't let students kind of jump groups at this time. Um, but if you want to switch between either being a flex student or a hybrid student, you are able to do so. Just reach out to your uh, counselor. And again, this is our, our bell schedule. Um, 8.30 is our start. 3.25 is the end. Doing classes 4, 5, and 6. Two lunches, A lunch, and a B lunch. Okay, let's move on to lunch. So will we eat lunch at, our, at school or bring lunch uh, or bring our own lunch? So again, we will be utilizing uh, two lunches, A and B. Um, we will be able to sit four students to a table in the cafeteria. We'll use the indoor cafeteria, the east cafeteria, and the west cafeteria. Uh, you can bring your own lunch, but we will also have lunches available for students. All school lunches and breakfasts are, are free to students during quarter two. They're all grab and go. Um, there's no a la carte, uh, but uh, students will be able to get a free um, hot lunch at school if they uh, choose to do so. If they want to bring their own lunch, that, that is fine too. Uh, what do students do when they arrive on campus? Well, if a student is going to get breakfast, they can utilize our, our cafeteria. And again, breakfast is grab and go. They can grab it, sit down and eat. Uh, but then once they are done eating, they need to go directly to class. Students that are not eating breakfast will need to go directly to class. And again, we are doing classes four, five, and six on your student's schedule. Uh, the question was, are we still eating with our advisory? I saw in the video that they were in the lunchroom. Uh, to, to clarify that, we will eat in the lunchroom, um, but your advisory will have lunch at the same time. So we're utilizing advisory as kind of the, the, the block of time to make lunch happen. So all of your advisory, if they're in the building with you at the same time, they'll be eating lunch with you at the same time. So by this point, by having advisory consistently throughout quarter one, everybody should know at least one person in the building that they would be able to, to sit and eat lunch with in these first couple of days back on campus. Okay, let's talk about some transportation questions. Okay, the question is this, um, is there any transportation for my child? Uh, he is in special ed. so. Uh, transportation will be provided to any student eligible for transportation on the days they're scheduled to come, whether they are a gen ed student or an, uh, a special ed student. If you have specific questions pertaining to any of our special ed services, please reach out to your student's case manager and they can answer individual questions. But the general question is, is that is transportation being provided? Yes, it's being provided to your student on the day that your student is scheduled to come to the building. Um, if you have specific special ed questions, reach out to the case manager. And again, we are um, going half capacity with buses and we're able to do so because we'll have half of the students um, in, in campus uh, on, on any given day. Uh, question regarding parking passes. Will students need one? Um, and since they could not use last year's pass for part of the year, will there be a credit or a refund? Um, there won't be a credit or a refund for parking passes um, purchased last year. However, there is no charge to park during the first semester. At, at this time, students will not be issued parking passes. They do not have to pay for a parking pass. Um, so students are able to park on, on campus without making a payment. Should we reinstate uh, parking fees for second semester? They would be at a reduced cost and we would begin dis uh, advertising and discussing that once we hit uh, probably November or even go closer towards the end of this semester. But for right now, students do not need to purchase a parking pass. There is no charge to park on campus. Um, and when will we get more information about busing info? We've sent out a couple of pieces of information in the last couple of weeks in our Viper updates, um, but students need to register for transportation if they want to utilize the bus by October 2nd. So we will resend that information out tomorrow to families so that you're able to access that um, and, and sign your student up for transportation if needed. Um, and again, how is transportation uh, um, 
uh, sorry, how our parking pass is working uh, and how our school ID is going to work. We will send school ID information out tomorrow because we will be able to do some digital IDs for so that students have an ID once they return to campus. So um, be looking for information regarding transportation and digital IDs coming to families tomorrow. We will send that via our Remind Blast. Okay, next round of questions is regarding uh, curriculum uh, and instruction. So what supplies are needed for students? Uh, our teachers will be sending out their Google Classroom invites tomorrow to their second quarter students. Um, so during that time, the student would be able to reach out individually to the uh, teacher if the teacher hasn't set out a, a list of supplies or requirements that they need for their classes. We're asking that each day a student has a mask, their Chromebook, earphones that work with their Chromebook in the event if they need to do some, some uh, digital or in independent work. We ask them to bring a refillable water bottle and then individual classroom items such as paper and pencil. And again, where is all information uh, on uh, this transition to the hybrid? You can find it on our school website tomorrow and through the Parent Hub. The final question is, how, how will this round of learning look different than the remote learning? And again, we are starting all of our students together at the beginning of class for um, introductions, uh, attendance, and instruction. We're bringing them back all together at the end of the day so that everyone knows here's what the, the final instructions are. Um, and then from there, our teachers will be utilizing uh, a blend of either the both groups are working together where you're at home and your in-person kids are all working together, whether it's for a lecture or a discussion or, or for a task or activity, or maybe the at-home kids are working on one assignment or activity and the in-person kids are working on something different. And then the next day they will flip. So our teachers are, are working hard on getting lessons prepared and ready for quarter two. Um, but know that the, the, the main difference is that there will be that in-person uh, feature for uh, students that are in the building and our students will be trying to provide as best they can that same type of in-person experience for all of our students, even if they are not able to be here in the building uh, due to their, their flex student uh, status. Okay, some final questions just uh, regarding some safety uh, procedures. Um, again, what happens if my daughter or, or my student cannot take wearing a mask all day? Um, again, we will be providing short outdoor mask breaks um, every class period, and they will be scheduled within the uh, by wing. Um, you know, and will there be still be an, uh, a, a remote option available to her? Um, students are able to go and change their designation between hybrid student or flex student at this time, again, reach out to the uh, your counselor or reach out to me and we can update that status for your student. Um, and again, uh, next question is, um, what steps specifically are you taking if there's a positive COVID test at, at your school um, in order to keep my students safe? Um, we, we reviewed some of the specific district procedures uh, the steps would include interviewing and isolating students and shutting down classrooms if necessary. Students may be sent home as a precautionary measure if necessary. We will uh, try to enact social distancing as, as best to our ability so that we are able to provide a safe learning environment for all students and staff. Students and staff will have masks on at all times when they're in the, in the building, with the exception of the outdoor breaks or while eating and bathrooms and high touch areas will be cleaned hourly and classroom areas will be cleaned every at the end of each class. And so again, regarding um, any of these, these practices or procedures, if you have questions, uh, please feel free to reach out to your, your student's counselor, to their to one of our administrators, to me directly, uh, reach out to their teacher. Uh, we will have information uh, going out again as we're going into uh, this uh, fall break to get everybody ready to go for the start on October 12. But those are the, the questions um, at this time. We'll, we'll start transitioning now into our, our close. A lot of things to process. If you do have questions moving forward, please feel free to reach out to either myself, 
uh, your student's counselor or, or any of our uh, members of our administrative team. But we're working hard to make this as seamless of a transition as possible for your student, regardless if they will be on campus on October 12 or 13, or if they will be staying uh, remote and being a flex student for quarter two. But uh, we're hoping to, to make this uh, work for everyone so that we can continue to have a positive experience as we're going into the rest of this, this school year. And again, this hybrid uh, model right now, this is what we would be using for quarter two. Um, this is, there is no set or definitive uh, announcement for a schedule for the second semester at this time. So we'll communicate with you as quarter two continues uh, to keep you updated with how things are going. But all of the information that you've heard tonight will be found on our website tomorrow. If you have questions, again, please feel free to reach out to us. So that's it. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay connected, Vipers. If you want to make that change between either hybrid student or flex student or flex student to hybrid student, please make sure you reach out to me or to your student's counselor by Friday so that we can get that change updated going into fall break. So but that's it for, for tonight. Have a great night, everybody. Good luck to all of our students and uh, staff as we're closing out quarter one. And remember, quarter one ends on Friday, and we are in fall break next week. So that's it for tonight. Let us know if you have any questions. Thank you, Verado. One Verado.